Right, now what let's do is let's take these and try to build a fossil record. Yeah, so use the fossil record to construct a phylogenetic tree. So if you kind of squint your eyes, you can kind of see a tree that looks a little bit like this. This is Homo sapiens. This is the modern day chimp. And this is Ardipithecus. Okay? So about where these two lineages come together would be the Australopithecus, and then Paranthropus leads to the chimp lineage, whereas Homo rudolfensis, Homo habilis, Homo ergaster, Homo heidelbergensis, and Homo neanderthalensis are in this part of the phylogenetic tree. So my question about what happens after the chimps and the hominids split and which species become which other species through this kind of speciation process, this is what we're looking at. <clears throat> the traits here, large versus small brain, small versus large teeth, and two versus four feet. The chimps are the four feet, right, quadrupeds, insufficient evidence for the white ones, but it looks like we move down this large brain, which is typical of the homo genus, versus the small brain, which is the paranthropus genus, right, moving in toward the chimp lineage. Doing okay? <clears throat> On the y-axis here, we have time, but they've added a new rub here. They've, they've given us bars here. The bars tell us uh, how long these particular genera and species were around on the planet. Notice that Homo erectus here is on the planet a lot longer than Homo heidelbergensis. Homo erectus is around for a couple million years, whereas Homo heidelbergensis is around for less than a million years. Does that make sense? Okay. Right, this idea of how long they're on there, plus the overall phylogenetic tree. Okay? But I think you should see two main lineages, the Paranthropus lineage going to the chimps, and the Homo genus that's, that's kicking out toward the modern-day Homo sapiens. Okay? All right. So if we just look now at the Homo sapiens lineage... That means we're just looking at this little piece here, no longer this back piece, right? We come from Australopithecus. That leads us to the Homo portion, whereas Paranthropus kicks you off toward the chimps. And then the big question here is, uh, how the heck did Homo sapiens come into being? And who are we more related to in terms of fossils Right. There's Homo rudolfensis, Homo habitus, Homo ergaster, uh, Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalensis, etc., etc. Okay? So, the next few slides talk about kind of where <coughs> Homo sapiens came from and this transition from what we think is our, our more recent ancestors, which include. Homo erectus, Homo ergaster, Homo heidelbergensis, and Homo neanderthalensis. So you can see those in these four different models. The first model here is called the African replacement model. In the African replacement model, <coughs> you have ergaster as our ancestor leading to Erectus and another lineage that includes Heidelbergensis. The Heidelbergensis tree splits into Neanderthalensis and the lineage that leads to Homo sapiens. Then, if you look at the very end of it, you have a portion that looks like this. And in the African replacement model, Individuals evolved in Africa, right? This lineage evolves in Africa. That's where Homo sapiens evolves. 
And then Homo sapiens begins to travel all over the place, and we get migration of individuals from one place to another. Homo sapiens starts in Africa, they then migrate to Europe and Asia. Homo sapiens then replaced the local hominids. Right? They replaced them without hybridization, meaning that uh, Neanderthalensis, which shows up here, Neanderthals, the Neanderthal lineage just kind of dies out. I don't know if the Homo sapiens lineage beat them all up or kicked them out or whatever, or the Neanderthals got sick or something else. But the idea is they disappear from the fossil record, and there's nothing genetically in the Neanderthals that is also in modern day Homo sapiens. This model says. There's no hybridization. In other words, Homo sapiens was not mating with Homo neanderthalensis. If they were mating together, that would be a hybridization because we're talking about two species coming together to produce an offspring. Okay? Now, the way we could test this is we could get some alleles from Neanderthals. I'll show you in a second. We do have Neanderthal DNA. But we could get some alleles from Neanderthals and look to see if these alleles <coughs> are also present in modern-day Homo sapiens. If we can find some Neanderthal DNA that also occurs in Homo sapiens, then we could make the argument that there was some hybridization. Absent those alleles, we would argue there's no hybridization. Okay? All right. Model number two is called the hybridization and assimilation. In this model, the tree looks exactly the same right, with Africa, Europe, and Asia. And then here is the Neanderthal. But in this model, in addition to humans wandering all over the planet, you also get some Neanderthal DNA kind of mixing in with the modern-day Homo sapien DNA. So in this model, the Neanderthals disappear from the planet through a process called introgression. In introgression... A species disappears uh, because there aren't many of them and they do reproduce with another species so their alleles are moving into the next generation but it's only a small portion of them so for example if these represent the Neanderthals and these are Homo sapiens then it's more likely that a Neanderthal mates with a Homo sapien, in which case half the Neanderthal DNA makes it to the next generation. And then the subsequent generation, the offspring, the hybrid, is more likely to mate with a Homo sapien. So each generation, there's a lower and lower percentage of the Neanderthal DNA that's found in those great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, great-great-great-grandchildren. The loss of this... Uh, species is because there aren't many of them to reproduce with and they end up mating with the Homo sapiens more often. This introgression process would lead to the loss of Neanderthals as a species, but under this model we would expect to see alleles from Neanderthals in human populations and there is hybridization. Does that make sense? So here there's hybridization between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, and there should be alleles present in Homo sapiens that we would think of as exclusively Neanderthal DNA. Okay? All right, those are the first two models. The third model here is the multi-regional evolution. In 
faulty regional evolution, you have uh, species, the Homo sapien species, I should say, Homo sapien evolving in all three places simultaneously, and the gene flow keeps them all one species. So you have Homo erectus, and then all three develop at the same time, Europe, Africa, and Asia. And then you have migration, which keeps it all one species. Uh, I'm not going to really talk about this model, because there's not a whole lot of evidence for it. Plus, in terms of parsimony, right, simple explanations, this one stinks. I mean, the idea that humans would simultaneously evolve in three different parts of the world in the same way that would allow them to all interbreed is just kind of, it's making a lot of assumptions. These other two models are much easier to deal with. And then the last model here, uh, the candelabra model, I don't even know if it's worth talking about, but in the candelabra model, humans evolved simultaneously in three different places, but they didn't migrate, and therefore they didn't remain as one species, and that seems kind of silly because we're all one species. So uh, I'm not going to talk about the candelabra or the multi-regional evolution. Let's just concentrate on this question here, what happened to the Neanderthals in terms of modern-day Homo sapiens? Did they contribute to the modern-day Homo sapien, which would be hybridization, or did they not contribute, which in the case they died out, and their alleles died out with them? Okay? <clears throat> All right, so we have these models, right? the African replacement, and the multi-regional. Again, I'm not doing the other two. The textbook I got this from doesn't do the other two either because they are very silly hypotheses. They're almost there uh, as an exercise in the scientific method. You know, you go through all of those, and they're very easy to disprove. All right, so what we're going to do is use various criteria as a way to test our two predictions. So our first set of criteria is the location of ancestor of neutral alleles. What are neutral alleles? Well, neutral alleles are alleles that are neutral with respect to selection. So the idea is if there's a mutation that introduces a new allele to the population, and it's a bad allele, I expect it to be removed from the population by the activity of natural selection. On the other hand, if it's a beneficial allele, I expect natural selection to increase its frequency in the population. If the mutation introduces a neutral allele into the population, my expectation is selection doesn't care, it doesn't even know it's there because it, it, it doesn't change the fitness of individuals. So if we're looking at an objective measure, we need to look at alleles that aren't under selection because then their frequencies are dictated by Hardy-Weinberg's bucket of alleles, right? Just how probable it is that they get pulled during meiosis. All right, so if we look at the alleles in a population, we could look at these alleles in Europe, Asia, and Africa. Under the African replacement model, if humans started in Africa, then our expectation is that whatever alleles we find in Europe and Asia, we should also find copies of those alleles in Africa, because that's the origin of those alleles. Okay? Under the multi-regional evolution hypothesis, <coughs> the alleles that uh, are in populations would have evolved independently of each other. Okay? Number two, the divergence time of Africa versus non-African populations. Under the multi-regional evolution hypothesis, these three populations of humans developing independently of each other, they, uh, we would go back further in time, and the African one predicts about 200,000 years ago would be the divergence time. If... And Africa is an older population of humans. They would have accumulated more mutations, accumulated more genetic diversity, whereas if 
these three populations evolved all at the same time, the genetic diversity should be equal in all three regions. And then finally, the set of neutral alleles. Any alleles that we find, we should be able to find that there are fewer of them in Europe and Asia, and they're a subset of those that are found in Africa. Whereas under the multi-regional, they all have their own unique set, and they aren't subsets of each other. Okay, the caveats are things that we need to be aware of, uh, things like the effect of migration or selection on alleles and whether their frequencies change, etc. But I think this is a good way to start here. So let's go ahead and uh, start through these kind of hypotheses and let's initially look at the Neanderthal. So that's Homo neanderthalensis. <clears throat> so uh, we have some Neanderthals. At the writing of this textbook, there were three. I think we've found a couple more. So these aren't fossilized Neanderthals. These are actually Neanderthals. So Neanderthal fell into a crevasse in the middle of two glaciers and was frozen in time for hundreds of thousands of years. We're still able to get DNA out of that individual. We also, I think, have a Neanderthal that fell into one of those bogs and was preserved because of the low uh, pH, the high acidity. And we have DNA from that individual. So these three Neanderthals that we have, we can do a molecular clock on those three sequences and find out that these Neanderthals all had a common ancestor around 250,000 years ago. Here we look at modern humans from different locations, both Africa and non-Africa. And then based on that, the humans come together about 170,000 years ago. And the ancestor of these Neanderthals and these humans puts us around 500,000 years ago. Okay? All right. That's the ballpark for the separation of Neanderthals and humans. And 170,000 years ago is the ballpark for the ancestor of the modern humans. Divergence time of all humans, 200,000 years or less versus a million, that's less than 200,000. That suggests that humans started in Africa and then branched out from there as they might.